Namaste and good morning and let's go live on Saturday, uh, what are we, June the 8th <coughs> at 7.10am. I've ridden 23 kilometres and it's still relatively cool out here at 15 degrees. But it's interesting before I get in this morning's topic to note that uh, here on the Gold Coast we're having a festival, a yearly festival called Cooley Rocks On which happens this time every year and, then, and just about without fail it rains <laughs> when the um, festival is on. So started the weather started getting overcast and raining yesterday and I thought, wonder why that is? And then I realised the Cooley Rocks On Festival is on. So <laughs> it's really strange, but the weather gods do not like the festival. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> I wanted to share some amazing news, fantastic news if you're not already aware of it, in relation to our perfect, pure heart and in relation to the understanding good morning linda thank you for watching and in relation to the understanding that our heart cannot be broken it is oh, i wonder if i'll actually get wet this might be a wet live stream with a little bit of water coming across let's see how i go i have a waterproof phone i have a waterproof body i have a waterproof bike <laughs> i even have a waterproof heart so it's a a myth and a lie that a lot of us believe and myself I believe for the longest time that you could have a broken heart I've told people in the past at different times that you know I was suffering from a broken heart and and you know it's something that's propagated through songs and movies and it's a very common belief when something is a very common belief we tend to accept it as being true but just because something's common doesn't mean it's, it's correct or true. And um, this is why I want to investigate this and, and sh shine some light on what is actually being experienced um, when we refer to a broken heart. So first off, we need to understand that our hearts are pure and perfect. That basically, quite basically, quite simply, they cannot be broken in a physical form. I'm, I'm not talking about the physical heart, of course. Um, let's just wait till this van gets past. Um, so, yeah, I'm not just talking about a heart in a physical form. I'm talking about the inner essence of our heart. What we refer to as our emotional core. What we have mistakenly believed was the center of our feelings and emotions. And because we've mistakenly believed that our heart is the, is the center of our feelings and emotions, we've mistakenly associated sadness and depression with a broken heart. Not understanding that these uh, emotions and feelings emanate from our mind and emanate from our thoughts coming from our mind. So, the common understanding is that when we are in a situation that we don't want to be in, when something's happened in our life that we don't want to have happen, that we are very, that for a period of time we can be very sad and, you know, depressed about the situation. And, you know, that's understood as, as being something that comes from the heart. Let's hang on a sec. All right. And it's understandable that people think this. Um, because this is just, as I say, a myth has been propagated over a long period of time. And I believe it for a long time. Until I started learning more through my spiritual teachings, until I started understanding the strength and purity of our heart, and understanding that it is our heart is infallible. It is total wisdom and therefore is totally perfect and unable to be tricked or broken or anything that you can think of that would be a negative quality associated with it. So why is it then if we're, you know, to give, an often, uh, to give a, a common situation where, you know, somebody in a relationship is, um, is broken up and they, they say, you know, they feel broken hearted. You know, there's two, term, there's two terms repeated there. They've broken up and they're broken hearted interesting isn't it well 
what the person is experiencing and what most of us experience and what I've personally experienced many, many times is not an imperfection of the heart, is not a, is not a um, broken heartedness, it's a disconnection from feeling our heart, it's a, from feeling the wisdom, from hearing the wisdom of our heart, it's a disconnection from, from that. And because of that disconnection, we feel an overwhelm. The two are connected. We are overwhelmed mentally, which creates an overwhelm emotionally, which then translates through to an inability for us to still our mind enough to be able to hear our heart's wisdom. In a situation of emotional overwhelm, the emotional overwhelm is not coming from our heart, it's coming from our head, and it is an inability of us to understand and accept the situation that has changed and has happened to us. And because that emotional overwhelm has put us in a, spun us out of control in a mental way, we are unable to connect with heart wisdom, which is pure guidance and advice that if we were able to connect with, we would find a peace. Um, you would notice this with some people that they can go from this um, state of being unable to, hardly able to cope with the situation that is overwhelming them, to finding moments of peace. The moments of peace that we find are when we still the mind enough to be able to connect with the heart's wisdom. So it is possible for our heart to be covered over from us so that we're not receiving the wisdom and the peace that emanates naturally from it. Our, our, tr our, um, our trial then, our, our trick then, that's not the right word either. What we need to do then is develop ways of bringing the mind back into control so that we automatically hear the wisdom of the heart and we feel the wisdom of the heart. So the emotional overwhelm, just to clarify it, when we talk about a broken heart, we're not actually talking about a broken heart, we're talking about an emotional overwhelm that is coming from our mind and our compu the computer that our mind is, it is unable to compute the thoughts and the subsequent emotions coming from it. And because it directs all its energy into this, we are then in a state where we do not hear our heart's wisdom. In fact, some people in this state have to reach a point of almost extreme panic before they reach a point of extreme calm. In other words, they have to wear themselves out mentally until the mind exhausts itself and then they can hear the wisdom of the heart coming through. So in the same way that we need to wash our body every day to cleanse away the dirt that is on our body and we need to uh, change our clothes and um, otherwise <laughs> we start to get dirtier and dirtier and we, <clears throat> we don't feel clean. The same thing happens with our connection with our pure heart. Our heart is pure, it is perfect, it is all wise and all loving, but we need on a regular basis to cleanse the impurities that stand between us and our heart. This is why spiritual processes are absolutely essential and crucial, because what they do is they achieve that cleansing they allow us to reconnect with a wisdom that is automatically there, that has all the answers when we need them, uh, as in intuition, and is our saving grace, I guess you could say, is our guidance. So this is the important thing to think about in the message that I'm, I'm bringing today, <coughs> is that our heart cannot be broken, for it is always perfect and always wise, and it is up to us whether we 
work on maintaining a contact with it or whether we um, get stuck in a set of traffic lights that never want to change. No, hang on, that wasn't it. <laughs> whether we maintain contact with our heart or whether we um, decide, and this is always our, our choice, whether we decide to follow the whimsy of the mind which will keep us caught in a situation where we have difficulty hearing our heart and where we are subject to the ever-changing demands of the mind and we get caught up with the thoughts and the emotions of the mind and we think when something doesn't go our way we think you know that it's we relate it back and say you know it's a broken heart and, and there's you know some of the songs that I've listened to in the past like one was called Foolish Heart and, um, and you know there's many many songs that attribute a quality to the heart that the heart doesn't have um, the heart is not and cannot be foolish cannot be broken it is something that we need to understand better and give more respect to something that we need to say hey my heart is pure my heart is perfect it is always guiding me correctly I just need to take the opportunity to develop my connection with my heart I need to cleanse myself spiritually so that I am clean enough to hear my heart again and get away from the distractions of the mind that were keeping me from being perfectly guided. So thank you for watching. I hope you get something out of this. I hope you think about this. I hope you have a great day. If you're on the Gold Coast, I hope you stay dry and I hope you live vegan and save lives. Thanks for watching. Ahimsa.